Hi, I'm Ben Chancefield, and I'm graduating from the Department of American Studies with my doctorate. I'm a historian of race and capitalism with a focus on US cities and cultural studies of the built environment. And I'm a 2021 winner of the Field Prize for my dissertation, Born in Flames, Arson, Racial Capitalism, and the Reinsuring of the Bronx in the Late 20th Century. So Born in Flames examines the wave of landlord arson that coursed through the Bronx and scores of other US cities in the 1970s. Though commonly confused with the uprisings of the 60s, these fires were lit not for protest, but for profit, most of which flowed into the ironically named fire industries, that's finance, insurance, and real estate. So by asking why cities went up in flames in these years, how their fires were extinguished, and what arose in their ashes, the project casts new light on the restructuring of US cities over the past five decades. I track how the turn towards financialization reached its peak right in the aftermath of the civil rights movement's heyday and ask what the coinciding nature of those two formations can tell us about this moment in the history of race and capitalism. At the center is the study of a state uh, subsidized fire insurance program that was initiated as a direct response to the uprisings of the 60s. Ostensibly intended to end insurance redlining, the program was more of a bailout for the insurance industry and it inadvertently incentivized landlords to set their buildings on fire. Through a study of the Bronx, known as the arson capital of the, of the world in these years, I chronicle how Black and Latinx tenants mobilized dozens of anti-arson organizations that, by the early 1980s, stemmed the tide of the burnings. And then a final thread of the project turns an eye to the cultural responses to the fires by considering how the ubiquity of the fire trope in films, fiction, and popular music of the era, from the towering inferno to uh, disco inferno, offers a hidden transcript for contested interpretations of the arson wave. These various threads weave together a story about risk, real estate, and power in an era when race and race thinking were undergoing profound shifts. Thanks. Hi, my name is Stefano Daniele, and I graduated in December 2020 with a PhD from the Department of Neuroscience. My work focuses on global brain ischemia, or in other words, how the brain responds to interruptions in blood flow, such as in the case of cardiac arrest. I'm a 2021 Porter Prize winner, and my submission is entitled Ex Vivo Normothermic Restoration of Circulation and Cellular Functions in the Large Mammalian Brain Hours Postmortem. Now, to place my PhD work in context, traditional understanding maintains that the brain is highly vulnerable to interruptions in blood flow, tolerating only several minutes of circulatory arrest before undergoing widespread and irreversible loss of cellular viability. However, over the past century, multiple lines of observation have brought into question the finality of cellular viability minutes or even hours after death in the large mammalian brain. Therefore, the central question I asked in my PhD work was, how long after prolonged global ischemia do cells within the large mammalian brain remain viable? Now to test this question, my colleagues and I developed a novel technology called BrainX, which consists of three components. The first of which is a circulatory device that is comprised of a variety of membranes, pumps, and tubes that mechanically mimic many of the functions of the heart, the lungs, and the kidney. The second is a uniquely formulated blood analog solution that is entirely synthetic acellular and is supplemented with a cocktail of protective agents to prevent cell death and promote recovery from prolonged periods of ischemia. And the third is a surgical procedure to isolate the brain from the skull, allowing us to connect it to the circulatory device. Now utilizing this system, my colleagues and I observed that circulation and cellular functions can be restored in the large mammalian brain up to four hours after death. Now these findings indicate that cells in the large mammalian brain retain a greater resilience to lack of blood flow than was once appreciated. And importantly, these findings 
may help lay the groundwork for the development of novel therapies to salvage brain tissue function in patients suffering from devastating conditions such as cardiac arrest and stroke. I thank you so much for your time and I thank the Porter Prize Committee for this honor and I continue wishing you health and safety during this difficult period. Thank you again. My name is Zuri Sullivan and I earned my PhD in immunobiology in December 2020. I'm fascinated by how the immune system helps animals adapt to different environments. I'm a 2021 winner of the Porter Prize and my prize submission was entitled Food Quality Control, Nutrition and Immunity in Intestinal Homeostasis. The gastrointestinal tract is a multi-kingdom cellular ecosystem that facilitates the procurement of nutrients from the environment. It is in constant contact with the outside world and is therefore simultaneously a point of encounter with life-threatening pathogens and toxins and the site of absorption for life-sustaining nutrients. Consequently, the intestine is tasked with the challenge of balancing its primary functions of nutrient uptake, bringing things in, with host defense, keeping things out, in response to a complex and constantly changing environment. This challenge is particularly daunting for omnivores like ourselves, whose diets change on daily, seasonal, and lifelong timescales alongside encounters with ingested toxins, enteric pathogens, and trillions of commensal microbes. Omnivorous lifestyles therefore require that the GI tract be adaptable to the dynamic nature of our environments. My doctoral studies examined the cellular and molecular mechanisms that confer this adaptability. Using mice as a model system, I discovered that the machinery involved in the digestion and absorption of carbohydrates was induced on demand in response to a high carb diet. This on demand induction involved changing the cellular composition of the intestinal epithelium, demonstrating that the GI tract can undergo rapid tissue remodeling in response to different diets. And my most surprising discovery was that a specific type of immune cell called gamma delta T cells was required for this intestinal adaptation to carbohydrates. This was the first demonstration that an immune cell can directly regulate nutrient uptake in the intestine and has established an entirely new area of research pertaining to the connection between nutrition and immunity. By linking nutrient uptake and host defense at the cellular and molecular levels, these adaptations conferred by the immune system enable this complex tissue to adjust the balance between nutrient uptake and host defense in response to environmental change. Thank you very much and congratulations to all of the graduates.